Are you ready to level up your gaming experience and join the elite? Then grab a toolkit and get ready to follow along as I show you how to build a top-notch gaming PC for $1000. In this video, I'll be sharing all the information you need to create the budget-friendly setup featuring the Intel Core i5-13600KF and the RX 6700 XT GPU. If you don't know what that means, it is pretty fast, so you can play games like Cyberpunk, Elder Ring, Fortnite and Warzone and even stream without breaking a sweat. As I was putting everything together, I almost killed both the GPU and motherboard in the process. <laughs> anyway, I miss making these kind of videos for you guys for such a long time. Now, you may not be able to build this computer exactly because of stock, inventory, but I will show you how to build something comparable to this around the same price. Also, before we get started, you need to smash the subscribe button and bell icon if you like to build your own gaming PC, that way you get notified when I drop more PC related content. So let's start with the CPU, the Intel Core i5-13600KF, which is one of the fastest gaming CPUs right now. If you're aiming for the best performance for dollar, I would suggest picking up something like the 12th gen Core i5-12400F, which you will see me use more and more because of its great value. Anyway, the 13600KF is a CPU that has 6P cores and 8E cores for a total of 20 threads. And it's an overclockable powerhouse that usually sits between $280 to $300 on the price scale. Why such an expensive CPU, you may ask? Well, we're trying to build a gaming PC for competitive gaming. Games such as Fortnite, Warzone, and CSGO. And we are aiming to play at lower resolution and less graphics detail to get the maximum frame rate. And this can introduce a CPU bottleneck. Now, bottlenecking simply means that one of our components is limiting our performance performance, and if we're able to make that component faster, we will be able to make our overall performance go up. And in a gaming PC, it is often the CPU or the GPU that is limiting our performance. And if the CPU can't keep up with our graphics card, we will be CPU limited. And increasing the power of the CPU will increase the performance and give us more FPS. And that is why in CSGO for example, a faster CPU will increase our FPS more than a faster GPU. Now the CPU doesn't come with the cooler, so we need to add that. If you are building a PC for the first time, I recommend the Cooler Master Hyper 212 due to its simple installation and it is without a doubt among the top air coolers in its category. Although it costs a little bit more than other similar air coolers, the installment process simply makes it worth it in my opinion. For the motherboard I picked up the Asus Z690 Prime but you should pick up the Z790 Prime instead because although this board technically supports Intel's new 13th gen CPUs I couldn't get mine to work, so to be on the safe side, I would definitely suggest avoiding the Z690 with Intel's new CPUs and jump straight to uh, the Z790. Now, if you don't plan to overclock at all, I recommend looking for something like a B660 as it is a ton more affordable, and I will be linking up an affordable B660 board as well. For RAM, we're gonna go with a standard 2x8GB kit from Kingston, but if you have a few extra dollars to spare, I would definitely suggest going straight for 32GB, which nowadays you can pick up an affordable DDR4 kit for just around $70 to $80. For SSD, because of stock and current pricing, I recommend the Team Group MP33 and you can find a 1TB drive for less than $60. And this is a no-brainer for $1000 build. As for the case, I'm going with the NZXT-H510 Flow. The power supply is the VGA GT650 Watt, which I was able to snag for $60 here in Sweden. Now, a VGA only makes solid and quality PSUs, so with this brand you don't have to worry about damaging your components. And as for the graphics card for this kind of budget, you should either pick up the RX 6750 XT or the 6700 XT which I am currently using in today's video. Or you could possibly also get the 3060 Ti 
if you must have Nvidia. That said, the 6700 and the 6750 XT are currently the best GPUs that I have been able to fit into a $1000 price point. And it is worth noting that the price for these models have been going down, with some sales offering for almost $400 or even below that. In terms of performance in Fortnite, 1080p and DX12 competitive settings, we saw well over 400 FPS. In Forza Horizon 5, with extreme settings, we got over 100 FPS. God of War, we're getting 81 FPS. In Elden Ring, we're getting 60 FPS at 1080p maximum. In Spider Man, we're getting 127 FPS. Rainbow Six Siege, over 500 FPS. Overwatch 2, almost 600 FPS. And in Valorant, almost 700 FPS. We also got Cyberpunk where we're getting 85 FPS, so solid performance overall. Now since I do have a bunch of GPUs to test with, I figured why not throw in several GPUs to give you guys an idea of the performance difference and what you can expect if you let's say go for something else than the 6700 XT. And in terms of an average of 10 games at 1080p resolution, the 6750 XT is about 6% faster than the 6700 XT, which is definitely worth having in mind. At 1440p resolution, the 6750 XT and the RTX 3070 are neck and neck in terms of performance, with the 6750 XT being about 5% faster than the 6700 XT. At 4K resolution, the 6750 XT is about 6% faster than the 6700 XT and about 6% 6 slower than the RTX 3070. Overall, this is a solid build, right around $1000. And as you guys can see, some of the parts, especially the graphics card, I was able to pick up used and get away even cheaper. And you can look up places like eBay or even java.gg for something more affordable. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Links to all PC parts can be found down in the video description.